The exhumation of the bodies from the mass grave in Izum, liberated from the Russian occupiers, will take several more weeks, city mayor Valery Marchenko said. 99% of bodies exhumed so far have traces of violence, the regional military administration reports. More than 450 corpses belong to pensioners, children, entire families and military personnel of the armed forces of Ukraine. Some of them were buried in coffins in bags in duvet covers, with their hands tied and with Ukrainian symbols. Next to me is a whole family, a young one, a father born in 1988, a mother born in 1991, and their little daughter born in 2016. Here is this family, the Stolpakovli, wife Olena, husband Dmitro, and their two daughters. It turned out that Olena's parents, younger sister and grandmother were also buried nearby. All of them were hiding in the basement, which was blocked as a result of the enemy airstrikes, the national police reported. Among the experts, local residents, someone personally buried fellow citizens, someone comes to the bodies of relatives. Clutching a handwritten list, Volodymyr Kolesnik is looking for loved ones. Number 164 is his brother's wife, number 174 is his aunt. An airstrike was carried out at Pervomaiska Street, House 2. What I heard, 74 people were under the rubble in the basement. The removal of debris was carried out only in April. At that time, bodies had already begun to decompose. Do you know if there were graves somewhere else? Yeah. Personally, I don't know. I heard that young girls were buried at Kapitolivka. The Ministry of Health of Ukraine sends doctors to the liberated territory. The Cabinet of Ministers promised to pay pensions that were not paid since February. Local residents tell journalists how they were mocked by the Russian army and treated during the occupation. Paracetamol pill and then God will help. People go out into the city, shops open, locals share their stories. Rihori Prihodko says his wife was killed on March 8th, five meters from the basement. I sat near until the neighbors said, stop, she died. It's been like half an hour already. They say do not hold, she is already the afterlife. The basement of Sergei Stanko's house, like many others, was destroyed in an airstrike. And then, he says, the ruins of the house were also shelled by Russian tanks. Sergei tried to rescue his neighbor, who was trapped between the ruins. Her name was Raisa. She was about 50, 55 years old. She said, cut my hand. I answered, how I can? Well, I cut off her fingers. And I said, I'm not a doctor. I can't cut a hand. Then in the morning I went down and found her dead. I closed her eyes. Ten torture chambers were found by Ukrainian law enforcement officers in the liberated territories of the Kharkiv region, six of them in Izum. The Russian military set up torture rooms in police stations, city councils and military registration and enlistment offices. The head of the national police, Igor Klimenko, reports that the murder of a 40-year-old agrarian in such dungeons has already been confirmed. He was strangled. They illegally held prisoners of war, civilians. They interrogated those who worked in local governments and law enforcement agencies here. In testimonies to the security service of Ukraine, local men who found themselves in the dungeons of the Russian occupiers say that they were tortured by electrocution and shooting. They were suspected of everything, recruited and searched for the military. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Galina says that her son did not let her go anywhere but went out himself in search of food and to call relatives from Poltava. During one of these trips he was delayed. The woman later found out that residents of the territories of Donbass not controlled by Ukraine mobilized into the Russian army, detained her son and threatened to shoot him. And those mobilized from the so-called Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics completely ungrasped him right on the bridge. He didn't tell me. People told me that they wanted to shoot him. For what? After six months of Russian occupation without the basic civilization benefits and under constant fire, people dream of a roof over their heads, communications, pensions and keys fire. It is necessary to rebuild, glaze, restore electricity, gas and water supply as well as other service lines. We will try to get on with our lives, now at least to get a pension. We have not received it since February. We want to return to normal life, at least a little, and not to sit and be afraid. 80% of the city is destroyed. Ukrainian law enforcers launch investigation into Russian army's war crimes. They have exhumed more than 60 bodies. The UN Human Rights Monitoring Agency sent a group of investigators to the Kharkiv region. Local authorities do not exclude that other such mass graves can still be found. Reported by Salhi Kulas, Yulia Bezborodko, UATV News.